It's been about seven years since we've covered one of the TSOSH 1911s and this time we get to come back hardcore with the Bantam from SDS Imports. Coming up, tabletop review and field strip coming up next on GB. Inside a nice, decently heavy duty, lockable and waterproof case is where we get the goodies. Uh, you get a nice, um, get the name of this material, uh, very nice soft cleaning cloth. The gun, two magazines, one on the gun, one here. We've got a disassembly tool. Up top we have our lock, a brush and a cleaning rod, and the manual behind here. And since there's more than one way to field strip a 1911, and I've sometimes been criticized for not doing it like it's done in the manual, I'll follow the manual this time. I went flipping through here, I did not see whether or not this is plus P rated or not. Uh, my particular example is 9mm. Why 9mm? Well, because 4 and a quarter, quarter inch barrel is quarter inch more than most ammunition was made for, so you get an extra velocity, extra power out of it. They're also a load of fun to shoot if you ever shot 9mm out of an all metal gun. Um, the manual itself is very cleanly and clearly done, everything is pretty easy to read. Um, including a full breakdown here. Let me get this stuff out of the way and we can go over the gun itself. Ain't that pretty? Look at all those cuts. <laughs> Lots of lightning cuts on it. It feels really nice in the hand. And clear, check magazine ejection real quick. And you can see it's still giving it some kick, which is nice. The two mags that it came with, came with are uh, Checkmate mags. I've not used Checkmate brand before, but I do know that with 1911s, especially 9mm 1911s, the magazine is usually what makes the gun run or not. So uh, when we take this to the range, I'll grab my pile of 9mm 19 mags and we'll run a what's for dinner mag compatibility test through it. Back to the Bantam. What is a Bantam? Well, a Bantam is a category of chicken or duck, as it turns out, never heard that before, that is abnormally small uh, for its species or type. And this bantam, which is also very lightweight, is the other aspect or use of the bantam word is for something lightweight. You can see there's lots of machining. We've got uh, an aluminum frame and lots of machining out of the steel on the slide and even some flutes on the chambering of the barrel to cut down weight on this thing. And it, it's really lightweight. You guys can see all the specs in the article, but it, uh, it has that 1911 feel but not that 1911 anchor kind of feel. It's still got some heft, it's still all metal, um, which feels pretty nice, but it's not silly heavy, if you will. Also has that Ed Brown bobtail cut, which I really appreciate. That's what made me so excited about this gun because of that meat right there. That flush on my hand on a straight backstrap on a 1911 always gets dug into by the gun, and you can see that fold just gives me some space to have it there. Um, it's a forged frame and slide. It's 70 series internals, uh, meaning it's minus one of the safeties later put, later put on uh, that 1911 purists don't like, partially because it can interfere with the trigger. This does not have that. Um, and it was hardened before machined, HBM. So um, really nice metal and metal working. And you can tell that a lot of effort went into this. Uh, that part of that is what adds to the cost. Uh, this at the time of filming is going for around a grand, which for an imported 1911 is higher, but for a gun with these features is certainly not high. Uh, it's a great price. I also noticed in my initial handling that these uh, G10 style grips here, this channel, this relief for the thumb that's usually there on these grips comes all the way through. It's actually functional. My thumb can pass through there to get to the magazine <laughs> release, which is great. Most of the time you end up with a, a depression here and then this part's solid and it's just kind of a gesture of a relief. This is a, a true relief, which is nicely done. Let's take a look at the other features of the gun. We've already shown that it's clear. It's not front. We've got a traditional bushing and a fiber optic front sight, uh, unrailed, which is as most 1911s ought to be to be more traditional, even though this is far from a traditional gun. And these lightning cuts here, which can serve for checks, but I'm a grab it over the top kind of guy, and there's plenty of grip back there. Even some nice styling cuts here, 
They're a little bit far forward for my hands to serve as a traction point or memory point, but they look good. We have a little bit of undercut of the trigger guard and a skeletonized trigger and hammer. Speaking of trigger, to show you what this one's like, come back immediately to a wall. Crisp break, as Knight's one ought to be. Our reset kicks forward, actually kicks you forward of the wall, so you get to come back again to it. So it's a nice trigger. As far as weight, I would put this weight at not um, not too light for carry. I think it's a, a good appropriate weight of trigger. I wouldn't be concerned about carrying this, um, which is good since it's a carry size and weight gun. We've got some nice uh, further checkering on the front strap. If you look at the texture on those grips, it's kind of mesmerizing. No beveling, of course, because there's not much metal to bevel. Our back strap has that same texturing and that nice cut. And then the grip safety is nice and large to uh, make sure that you're not going to have any grip problems with it. A lot of shooters who learned isosceles first or shoot a very hardcore isosceles stance have issues with grip safeties because they're not putting much pressure on the back of the gun. Um, this one's pretty easy to set aside. As far as slide to frame fit, just see there how nicely flush that is. And we have rattle only from the grips, which is a nicely, nice and tightly done. Set up our sights, that fiber optic front, and you've got a square top U-notch in the rear that that front sight post sits nicely in. So it makes for a nice clean sight picture. Next we'll field strip the Bantam and take a look inside the gun. Field stripping 1911. Oh, I'll tell you what, the comments on the videos where I've taken the slide off first, so tired of those. So guess what guys, I'm going to do it the old school way. Um, or the right way. The way. I've never understood it, like if the gun comes apart, is it not field stripped? And if it's field stripped, is that not correct? We've checked for clear. We're going to start by removing this barrel bushing. It can be done by hand. Tools like the one included make things a lot easier. You're going to press down fitting this up against that bushing and give it a turn. You want to be careful not to let this little guy go flying. And you get the spring out. Next we're going to bring our slide back until, zoom in for you, that rounded notch there is above our slide stop. And once all that's lined up, you're going to push on your takedown pin, you notice this is nicely beveled. That is a uh, another custom option or something that people usually pay to have done to the 1911 to make it easier to push out. That pin out, we can take our slide off the frame. There's our nice and short guide rod and our barrel. Whoops, get the bushing out of the way. Once the bushing is turned right, it comes straight out and the barrel can then be pulled out the front. If you look inside the slide, you see it's definitely a 70 series, there's no extra stuff in there. Your manual safety is your safety. Did notice the action felt a little coarse, um, wasn't super slick like you'd get on a real high-end custom gun. Might need um, some break-in or just a little more oil. There is some oil on these rails already, but uh, it's starting a little tight. In the old school days, that's how you want a 1911 to start, so that as it breaks in, things loosen up. And here's our four and a quarter inch barrel. See, so we've got those nice lightning cuts inside. Tacti Kitty has made an appearance. It's been a while for her. And a long feed ramp that is polished. As far as chamber support, as always, we're going to use some nozzle match to check that. By the way, this Nozzler Match, uh, as boxed and seen here, is no longer in production. It's been replaced with their ASP, um, Assured Stopping Power, I think is what it's called. But it's almost the same thing. Slightly different projectile, but the reason why we use Nozzler is their stuff is the most consistently made and loaded stuff that I've ever seen. So it works for chamber support check. What we're going to do is drop the round in, listen for a plunk. Sound nice. Check to see how free it is. It can rotate. And no folks, I am not a gunsmith. These are just things that I've picked up after reviewing a few hundred guns and noticing things. 
And for chamber support, we're trying to see how much brass beyond that little shoulder there is exposed. I'm looking underneath, just a teeny tiny bit. If that's enough to consider it fully supported or not, I don't know. I'm not sure if there's a technical term for sure, but it's more supported than a Glock, not as supported as some others, but pretty good. Uh, the reason why you want that is you don't want your brass to expand. Um, and if your casing should fail, it's going to fail where it's not supported and then blast all that pressure and goodness back into your hand instead of out the barrel. So this looks like a good barrel. That's particularly important if you're going to use uh, aluminum cased ammo or something that's been reloaded several times. Uh, we do shoot aluminum, but we do not use reloads. That way anything you see us do can be repeated uh, at home using factory ammunition, the same stuff that you see us put in there. So I put the barrel back in, I'm going to put this guide rod back in place. Fits down in there and has a little, little shoulder. Then I'm going to get the slide back on the frame. And this eyelet you want to make sure is downward because it's going to be lining up with that hole for us to get the uh, takedown lever back in. Oops. Our guide rod has come loose and out of its spot, and there we go. Nope, again. Sometimes this happens. Just gonna tuck that all the way up. Start with this upside down so the gravity's working with me. There we go. And we're gonna look for that window to line up and get our pin started. Now this pin is where you can end up with the smiley face or the idiot scratch they call it on 1911s. Um, you don't want to push this pin in all the way just yet, leave it kind of floating and then make sure that that same notch is where it was before and get this lined up to push into place without scratching against the frame. With that done Tilt it up, and we're going to drop our spring back in, making sure it seats on the guide rod. And there's all kinds of different ways to do this, folks. This is just my way of doing it. Oh, you know what? Dirt. I always forget something. Get your bushing in there to make sure the barrel's lined up. I have this turned 90 degrees so there's plenty of room for the spring and that end piece. There we go. And now push this in and hold it till it's flush so that the bushing can turn over it. And now it's back. So everything's back together. Do a quick functions check. Fires, trigger resets. And just for the heck of it, safety works. Really, really good looking gun. A nice size and weight uh, and barrel length to really be able to enjoy 9mm, which I'm looking forward to. When we get this to the range, we'll get cold shots, first impressions, which truly are first shots out of the gun. Then um, our full mag plus one, see how it runs, especially on these Checkmate mags. Uh, if you guys know of Checkmate mags, please share your experience with us uh, in the comment section. I've not run a lot of these. Then, um, our trademark what's for dinner test. We'll take it to the spinner where this should do really well. We've got a crisp trigger, good sights, and extra muzzle energy from an over four inch barrel. Some practical accuracy and concluding thoughts. And that is the Bantam from TSOSH and SDS Imports. Thanks for watching.